Ko te hui tēnei e wete wete ana i ngā kōrero nui o te wā. The Ferrari surrounding Māori rights and interests has hit the spotlight again, particularly after the full-page ads in places like the NZ Herald from groups like Hobson's Pledge. And we've also had the report from the Waitangi Tribunal into Y3300. So joining me now are the Dean of the School of Law at AUT University, uh, Ahorangi Professor Kylie Quince, and Auckland University Lecturer at the Faculty of Education and Social Work, Kendra Cox. Te nā korua. No mai. Let's get into it. The Waitangi Tribunal report on Friday released its interim report into Y3300, the Treaty Principles Bill, and it recommended that the bill be abandoned. Ahorangi, pe hau <laughs> Well, nothing surprising, I think, out of that report. The poor tribunal's been under the gun for the last few months writing similar reports about a number uh, of kaupapa. They say it's discriminatory, doesn't, doesn't appropriately honour te tiriti, it abandons both the text and the principles of te tiriti, so nothing surprising there, I don't think, but good work nonetheless. Kendra? Kia ora, yes, exactly. Not a surprise at all. Um, one thing that came through really, really strongly in the interim report um, was the Waitangi Tribunal saying that this is only a political and ideological attack on Te Tiriti o Waitangi and on Te Ao Māori generally. This is not based on evidence, much like every other, you know, kind of reform policy, legislative reform that this government has tried to ram through very quickly under urgency, and it's purely political. What do you think will happen next? I mean, do we think that the government might pay a little attention to the recommendations in this report, Ahorangi, or will it just carry on? Well, I mean, politically we know that uh, the Prime Minister has already said that uh, neither he nor New Zealand First are uh, committed to supporting the bill past its first reading. This is purely part of a coalition agreement. But, of course, this is this does provide an opportunity for Prime Minister Chris Luxon to show some leadership and actually show some commitment to Tititi by withdrawing the bill before it gets to the first reading. Don't, don't forget, John Key said at the National Party uh, conference a couple of weeks ago that actually they need to pull their heads in. They need yeah. to show some commitment to Māori and to te tiriti. Do we think that'll happen, Kendra? Or do you think that we'll still get the first reading of this bill and then after that New Zealand First, as the Ahorangi said, New Zealand First and National will just pull away? Kia ora. I think at this stage it would be a surprise if the government would be, were to pull back you know, from this trajectory that they've set themselves on. And the reason I say that is because of you know, the way that they've treated the fast track bill, mm. the um, potential repeal of Section 7AA of the Oranga Tamariki legislation and every other kind of anti maori anti-tetiriti policy change that they've tried to push through. Yeah. However, as they're well aware, they're going to be met you know, with kaha Māori, with mana Māori, um, if they do push forward with this. Yeah, and I think the koronaihana Rahui Papa got up and said... We reserve the right to fight mm. and we'll continue to activate and things like that. David Seymour says he welcomes the report, quote unquote, <laughs> welcomes the report and says we need the national conversation about the treaty. What do you think he means and how will Māori react to that kind of national conversation that he talks about? Oh, uh, wh which conversations he's talking about? He's, invi he's been invited to, he was invited to Kuronehana, was a no-show. Mm -hmm. You know, he's in been invited to other hui Māori and has not engaged in a conversation. So what we do know is what's, what those words on paper are. And those words on paper is a drug that the ACT Party's draft of the Treaty Principles Bill doesn't reference Māori at all, mm -hmm. which is clearly not what our tūpuna signed up for. Yeah, mm. and do, do you think Chris Luxon will, will pay heed or take note of what the former Prime Minister, you know, John Key, said about trying to tone the racial issues, particularly Crown Māori relations, down? He would be unwise not to. He would be unwise given the trajectory of that government. He wants to be a two-term government, clearly, mm. but he's heading on a, on a path where that may not be possible. Mm -hmm. The Tribunal Report, Kendra, also recommended that the Crown should constitute a Cabinet Māori Crown Relations Committee that has oversight of the Crown's Te Tiriti Treaty policies. Now, interestingly, the Te Arafiti Minister, mm -hmm. Tama Potaka, has announced that he's looking at some changes mm -hmm. at Te Arafiti. Can we take from that that I think he will probably take that recommendation lightly, do you think? Mm. What is motivating this change, do you think, that Tama Potaka is? Mm. I think really what's motivating this change, again, you know, is the underlying politics of this coalition government. And as much as Tama Potaka has said, you know, that as um, kind of Minister for Māori Affairs and things like that, he has the interests, best interests of, you know, te ao Māori at heart. He's talking about a, you know, positive changes apparently that he's trying to make in housing, social services, things like this. We need to look at what this government is actually doing and not only listen to the words that they're saying because that's where we're going to see what their real intentions are.
Do you think he's been forced into this position because of the financial constraints that this government has clearly put on government departments? Rationalisation, mm. even retrenchment, some might say. Yep. So we've we've heard there's going to be no funding for uh, you know, you know, much of the work of Te Ara Fiti, mm. So to some extent, that has been forced. But I, do, I agree with Kendra. I think much of this is just pure ideology, as many of this government's decisions have been. We don't care really which work stream sits with Te Puni Kokiri or Te Ara Fiti, That just that those things are done. Mm. But um, I would say that this, so this is just an undoing of what former Minister Davis did. And I think that's all there is to it, that mm. it's just undoing what a previous minister has done. But I can see the whakaro behind Minister Davis's uh, plan there, which was Arafiti is a bridge. This is about the bridge to the future. And that treaty settlement, settlements are an encounter, but, but actually... The Crown Māori relation is a relationship, mm. and relationships need to be, you know, fostered just like we do with our own friends and our own family. They need to be tended to, nurtured, you know, and and brought along. Can, can I ask, the question that's in my mind is: How would you characterise the Crown Māori relationship at the moment? At the moment. I would say it's almost an abusive relationship in many ways, right? Um, I think that what you can see on the part of the Crown, you know, is certainly a very controlling, you know, and sort of coercive partnership um, in many ways. Um, we can see through everything that this government has done over the past eight months is the constant attacks and stripping of tinoranga, tiratanga, and any steps towards partner, you know, part, true partnership and power sharing with Māori. Mm. It's interesting you say because, again, at the Koronaihana, Māori were very clear. Tuku Morgan and Rahui Papa said, stop the racist mm. Māori bashing bills. And I think the tribunal was essentially saying, you have a Crown responsibility mm. to talk and engage with Māori. I guess the question then comes, is, is that really going to happen, do you think, in this term of government? Or is the Prime Minister being dragged kicking and screaming into these issues by his coalition partners? Well, to date, it does seem like they have had... This is the tail wagging the dog, that they keep consistently referencing this coalition agreement. Mm. And, and Prime Minister Luxon repeated at the weekend that perhaps we were in a, a, a compromised position in relation to the Treaty Principles Bill that neither of us are, are happy with. Mm. Well, one of you could just actually show some... Get out kaha of it. And, yeah. Yeah, and exit. Yeah. OK, I want to talk about Māori wards. Uh, are you surprised by the response of many councils across Aotearoa who've actually been pretty staunch and said there are benefits to Māori wards and the work that we do, we want to keep them? Carl, no, not surprised at all. Because many councillors, you know, actually do represent the will of the people um, that they have been elected to represent. And, you know, Māori, um, kind of Māori views, you know, um, awahatanga, creativity, um, Māori kind of views on environment and kaitiakitanga and those sorts of things can be seen by many people to be really positive. And also, I think that this kind of idea that much of, you know, te ao Pākehā, tauiwi mā, you know, are racist and are anti-Māori is actually not true. As much as this, you know, many people within this coalition government and other kind of outside political forces and actors want to represent, you know, te ao tauiwi that way, I actually don't think that's the case. There will be local referenda. Mm. Do you think those referenda will uphold the position that many of these councils have about wanting to keep the Māori wards for the benefit of the communities that they serve? That's going to be interesting. Mm. I've, I've been really quite delighted at the number of councils that so far have affirmed in advance of those mandatory referenda. In, so a, pretty, is, in a pretty loud way. Mm, they, they have not been backward in coming forward. In a celebratory way, and that draws a line in the sand for their populace to say you know, actually, let's let's go with this. They've also had, they've had 18 months, many of them, of their first Māori ward councillor, and they can see the benefit of, of that, as, as Kendra has said. So it's an opportunity for councils to, to say, yes, this is who we are and who we stand for in this particular rohe, and for us to mobilise and, and run with it. At the risk of many people saying this is a stupid question to ask, Julian, I want to talk about Hobson's Pledge. <laughs> And as many people will know, uh, they had some direct advertising via the New Zealand Herald relating to the Marine and Coastal Area Act. Isn't this just a group expressing their right to free speech? Kendra. In some ways, yes. 
right? Sure, everyone has a right to free speech. Um, what you don't have a right to is to have absolutely no pushback, you know, to the things that you say. What you don't have a right to is to not be challenged on the things that you say. And people, um, very rightfully so, you know, have seen that particular ad um, in the Herald and, you know, past campaigns by Hobson's Pledge as well as very, very racist and very clearly anti-Māori. Um, and so, yes, sure, they can say those things, but they can't say them and expect absolutely no pushback from Te Ao Māori, especially at a time when Māori feel under attack, you know, and are under attack. And the misinformation is the word that everyone uses aye, here. Aye, so oh, there, there are some... So, yes, they, they have a right to free speech and to the consequences of that speech, but you do not have the right to spread misinformation, untruths. So there are implications that, you know, that, that the foreshore is going to be... Um, that it is in it return to public ownership. It was not in, It's not in public ownership. That Māori are going to limit the rights of non-Māori to access and use of the foreshore and seabed. Again, these are all myths, truths and misinformation. You cannot do that. Mm. Um, this was so good. Can we do this again next week? <laughs> Let's do it again, Sarah. Come on. Uh, e mihi ana kia koura. Tēnā koura. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming on. Kia ora. Nā mihi nui kia koura tahi.